Hello, Sao Paulo. It's a great uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, I traveled all the way from little Belgium to big Brazil, and it's awesome to be here. Um, today, I'll be talking to you uh, about a dashboard I created uh, using PHP, Vue, and WebSockets. I'm Freek van der Herte. I'm a partner and a developer at a company called Spasi. Uh, like many of you, I'm active on Twitter. My handle is Freek Merze. And I have a blog, Merze.be, where I talk about modern PHP development and Laravel. Now, I also run the PHP user group in, in Antwerp, together with my buddies Dries and Frederick. If you're ever in Belgium and want to talk at our user group, let me know. Um, clicker isn't working. Um, I also have a hobby project, Odeer app, which is an uh, uptime monitor. Um, I've recently uh, launched it. But my main gig is my company, uh, which is called Spasi. And we create websites, applications, and web shops. Our team is quite small. We only consist of seven developers and one manager. And we specialize in Laravel development. Now, before heading into the dashboard itself, I want to say a few words about open source software first. At Spasi, we create a lot of open source. Our company couldn't really exist without open source. We use Nginx, we use PHP, we use Laravel, we use Composer. And I think, like many of you, our company couldn't really exist without open source software. Probably many of you thank your job due to the fact that open source software exists. We're at the PHP conference, so it's true for all of you. And yeah, we like to give, to give back. So we created a lot of open source stuff, and we listed all our packages on our company homepage. We currently have 160 public repos, and our code has been downloaded for yeah, almost 10 million times, and it's going fast now. Um, the, our packages are being downloaded for 1 million times a month now. And it has a lot of benefits for us. It has only benefits for us. Of course, we learn a lot by creating open source software. Uh, we are also forced to write quality documentation because without documentation, nobody's going to know how to use our stuff. We also uh, write quality tests, because without tests, nobody is going to trust our stuff. Of course, if you take a look at the code, then I hope you'll conclude that we know our way around PHP and Laravel, so there's a commercial aspect to it as well. And of course, we use those packages in all our projects. Now, I've said there are only benefits, so if you're in a position in your company to advocate the creation or maintenance of open source software, I highly urge you to do so. If you want to know how we manage our time at our company to create so much open source software with a small team, I urge you to um, read the article on my blog where I've told the story about it. Now, I should have said this earlier, but our packages are not entirely free. There's a special license on them called Postcardware. If any of our stuff makes it into your production environment, you are required to send us a postcard. This is our address. I'm currently missing like 9 million postcards, so <laughs> keep them coming. Every postcard that we get goes to a wall in, a, in our office. Let's take a look in our office. Let's turn around. This is our actual office. And what we do we see there at the end of the wall? We see a dashboard. Let's step a little bit closer to take a look. This is how our dashboard looks like, and this is what I'm going to explain during my talk, how this thing works. But before we dive into the technical details, let's see uh, what is being displayed at the dashboard. At the top left, we have uh, a tile where every tweet where our company is mentioned pops up in real time. Next to it, we have a tile that shows all the events that are important to our company. 
Um, these events, we get them from a Google Calendar. At our company, we're all big music lovers, so we like to know which music is playing. So we display the current music at, on this tile, and we use the last FM service for that. This tile really needs uh, no explanation. It's just the time. And yeah, it's, I took this screenshot on a very beautiful day in Belgium for lots of you, 27 degrees is like winter, but this is like our top day in Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've said that we create a lot of open source software, and we're kind of proud of that. So we uh, display uh, the download numbers on our dashboard as well. We fetch these from, uh, from packages. And I'd like to call this tile the happy tile. This tile is the unhappy tile. So here we see all the issues and the pull requests, and we try to keep that number down, but it's hard. The tiles in the middle, they display uh, the tasks uh, that our current team should be, should be working on. There's a tile for each member of our team. And we also have a tile that displays any of, uh, that, that will display any sites that might be down. If it's down, then that will go uh, flashing yellow, hey, there's a problem uh, with this site. And that is what is being displayed on our dashboard. That dashboard itself is also entirely open source. On this repo on GitHub, you'll find the actual code that is being, that is being um, uh, deployed on our server. Feel free to fork it and create a dashboard of your own with it. Now, before we dive into the details, let's see a high-level overview of how this dashboard works. In short, this dashboard is a single HTML page. And it's being displayed full screen in a browser. And we display it, display it without reloading the page. Why don't we uh, want to reload the page? Because yeah, all the elements are flashing if you reload the page and repositioning. And we want our dashboard to be as quiet as, as it can. We want to be very calm. It shouldn't attract any attention while it is working. So how do we update that dashboard? With JavaScript. And each tile uh, listens for events coming in. And when it uh, hears an event for that tile, it will update uh, itself. Each tile has its own update frequency. So the clock gets updated every second. And like the, the packages tile, we update that once an hour. Which technologies do we use for this? We use Laravel, Pusher, and Vue. And I'd like to see a quick uh, show of hands who here uses Laravel. OK, a fair share of you. Pretty great. I love Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> who here uses Pusher? Not too much. WebSockets, anybody? Anybody worked with WebSockets? OK, a little bit bigger. And uh, who has experience with Vue.js? OK, Brazil. <laughs> cool. Now, for those who don't know uh, Vue.js, I'll go soft on you. We'll do a, a quick intro of, of what it does. So first, Laravel. Uh, I don't need to explain it to anybody. I think here, uh, Laravel is a kick-ass uh, PHP framework. Uh, what is its role in this project? Uh, it renders the initial page. And it also fetches data from external APIs. So it reaches out to uh, the Google API, to the calendar. It reaches out to Last.fm. It reaches out to, to packages. And when um, new data comes in, when new data is being fetched, it will broadcast that over to uh, Pusher. Uh, to communicate with uh, some of the APIs, we use a few packages. And while creating the dashboard, I searched for packages for Twitter, for Google, and lots of them, but I couldn't find any good ones. So me and my team created a few ones ourselves to yeah, talk to the Twitter streaming API, to talk to Google Calendar. 
to talk to lots of them in the packages API, and there was a good one for GitHub that, uh, that we used. Next up, Pusher. Pusher describes itself as a service that provides full duplex communication channels over a single TCP connection. Now, people call this WebSockets, but I like to call it magic because it works so fast and it's so reliable. And we use that to transport events from the server to the browser. So that's the, that's the middleman. It does it in real time. It's lightning fast. And we do it in a secure way. Now, there's nothing really sensitive being displayed on our dashboard, but we like to keep the um, tasks that each member of our team should be working on a little bit private. I should also mention that Pusher is a paid service, but they do have a free tier. And that free tier lets you send, I think, 100,000 events a month, or a day, maybe. But for this dashboard, uh, you only need 4,000 uh, events for, for our setup, so you're pretty good in the free tier. So, last up in the technology stack is Vue.js. Vue.js is a very uh, easy to learn JavaScript framework, and it has gotten it. Uh, it gets a lot of love from the Laravel community, and I can understand why. Much like Laravel, Vue.js puts developer happiness on top. So there's top-notch documentation, and it's very welcoming to to newcomers. Vue.js lets you uh, easily create reusable components. And in our dashboard, each tile that you see is its own component. And like I've said in the intro, each tile listens for its own events. And when an event that, uh, that it is interesting in comes along, it will update itself. So this is, in short, how the dashboard works. At the left, we have the APIs, so server is, uh, the Laravel on the server is going to reach out to those APIs. When something uh, gets fetched, it sends an HTTP request to Pusher, and Pusher, in its turn, will send uh, the information via WebSockets to the browser. That's how the dashboard works in a nutshell. Now, I can talk a lot about it, but you'll get a little bit of a better feel when I just dive in the code. Now, I'm going to explain a few things. I'm going to tell you how the grid system works, how you can position things on the dashboard. Then we are going to see the, the clock tile, because it's a very simple component. It's uh, a crash course for those that uh, don't know Vue.js well. Then things get a little bit more interesting with the packages style. Then we're going to fetch data from the server and send it to, uh, to the browser. And then uh, we are going to have a little fun with, uh, with the Twitter tile. There will be live coding. And we will use a live internet connection. Things may go wrong. <laughs> so let's hope the internet gods are very happy today. OK. So. Here I have running an empty uh, version of our dashboard. Uh, I don't know if you can read it in the back, but this is a domain on, uh, on my own computer. It's running locally here, so I can play around with it. Yeah, and you can see there's a little bit of a time difference in Antwerp, and I'm really jet lagging now. So this is what I feel the time should be here. And it's also, yeah, a bit colder there. So. Please stay here. It's better here. <laughs> OK. Let's uh, make this a little bit bigger so everybody can uh, see this. And I want you to focus a little bit on the, on the left here. People that know uh, Laravel, they immediately recognize, hey, this is a, a Laravel application. This is the default structure. And in Laravel applications, the views live in the resources folder, in the subfolder views. And this uh, project has basically only one view, which is the dashboard view. And you can see here, there's not a lot, lot of HTML going on. 
But there are some weird HTML tags here. Twitter, music, uptime. Now, those tags, uh, those will get picked up by Vue, and Vue will replace it with regular HTML. We'll dive into that later. What I want you to notice now is these positioning things. You should think of the dashboard a little bit like a spreadsheet, where every, every row has a number and every column has a letter. So if I do everything away here, and I just keep the time weather, let's do this away, and I position this on, uh, on A1, it goes into the top left corner, hopefully. Yeah, and there's the dashboard, uh, the, the clock tile. We also support ranges. So if you want to make this a little bit wider, you just do column, and then B for the second column, first row. And then we've made it a little bit wider. Now, if you want to have, for instance, yeah, two clocks, no problem. Let's make it happen. Let's set this one on the second row, first, first column. And now I have two clocks going on here. So that's how easy it is to, uh, to position things. Now, uh, behind the scenes here, we will uh, use CSS Grid, which is uh, an awesome new way to positioning things uh, here. But I don't want to dive into uh, to the details too much here, because yeah, this isn't a CSS conference. Now, uh, what you can also do here is uh, create extra rows. So if you need um, a dashboard that has four rows, no problem. I just change the row property, and now yeah, there's a little bit more space. So there can, there's place for two more components here now. So is everybody on the same page here? Everybody understands how the positioning works? Cool. Then I'm going to restore the dashboard to its former glory. And we're going to dive into the view part. So next up, I want to tell you how this style works and how view works. So I, I've already said that uh, view will replace this by actual HTML. Let's find that HTML. In the Laravel project, all uh, JavaScript lives also in the resource folder, in assets, in JavaScript. And I've created a directory here called components. And you can see here that there is a file for each component of our dashboard. These files contain the few components. Let's open up the time weather component. So this is the code of that component. And every view component has three properties. The first one, HTML in the template. And this is the HTML that view will put in, uh, in this view here. So this HTML will replace this part. Next up in a view component is a little bit of behavior in the script tags. Here we can write some JavaScript. And the third thing that you can put in a view component, but we didn't, uh, didn't do it in, uh, in this project, is some, uh, some styling, some CSS. But we prefer to have the styling uh, all together in a separate file. So in this project, we have HTML and we have, uh, we have some JavaScript. If you take a look at this HTML, you can see that there are, there are some funny things going on here with daytime between the curly braces. These two, uh, these two uh, pieces are variables, and they are actually the state of this component. And state of a component is what a component is, is all about. It's the information that we want to display here. If we look um, a little bit below in the JavaScript uh, part, then you can see here that we have a data function here, and the data function returns the initial state of the component. And you can see here that we have that date-time thing going on. Now, a core concept in Vue is that whenever you update the state of the component, whenever you update the date or the time variable here, 
the component will re-render itself. So how do we, in this uh, example, update those properties? Well, in a view component, you also have a created method. And it's a bit like a constructor in PHP. It gets called when the component is created. So what are we going to do? We are going to uh, call a function here, refresh time. And what does that function do? We use a popular JavaScript library to, to fetch and uh, format the time and set the current date into the state of this component. And we also do that for the time. And if I go back to create it here, you can see that we uh, call that function every second. So every second, we update the state date, we update the state time. And just by mere updating those variables, the HTML will re-render. And that's how this thing gets refreshed. So that's a crash course into Vue.js, what it can do. Is everybody on the same page here again? OK, cool. We need to go deeper. Let's go and explore the packages style now. So how does this thing work? So the package style need, needs to have some data, some data from packages. So we are going to use Laravel to fetch that data. Now, people familiar with Laravel, they know that all um, yeah, console commands, they live in the console subdirectory. And you can see here that I have a components subdirectory here. And I've created a directory for each and every tile that our dashboard has. Let's open up packages. Here it has a tasks, uh, task fetch totals. Now, this uh, piece of code will reach out to packages here. And there is a lot of uh, mumbo jumbo here going on. I don't know how that will get translated. But um, the important thing here is that the outcome of all this function is an array with a daily key, a monthly key, and a total key. And it contains yeah, the total downloads of our packages, the monthly, uh, the monthly downloads, and the total amount of, of packages. Um, before going further here, I'm going to draw some attention here that this uh, class extends command which, if you know Laravel, you know that this signifies that this is actually a console command that you can schedule. And in Laravel, how you can schedule things is by registering it in the kernel. So I have the task signature here, dashboard, fetch packages total. And in Laravel, how can I uh, make sure that it gets called every, uh, every hour? I can schedule it in the kernel. And here you can see that that dashboard fetch packages total is a task that will be performed hourly. So we're going to do this every hour. Let's go back to fetch totals. So we have our array here with the totals. And we are going to give that to an event class here, namely totals fetched. We are going to give it that. And event is a standard way in Laravel to, uh, to fire off events. Let's go into that totals fetched class. So totals fetched is an event class, and it's actually very, very simple. It gets those totals. And you can see that we do a funny thing here. We're going to loop through, uh, through the items in that array. And we are going to put every key in that array as a public property on that event. Now, why do we do that? Because in Laravel, when you transmit events, the data being sent are the public properties. So that's why we put that data on the public properties here. If I delve a little bit deeper, and you can see that this totals fetched event class extends the dashboard events class. And that dashboard events class implements an interface called should broadcast. Should broadcast is an interface native to Laravel. And it signifies to Laravel, hey, you should broadcast this to an external service like Pusher. So that's the, uh, uh, the function of this, this interface. And it, we only need to implement one method, namely broadcast on. 
and we broadcast it on a dashboard channel. You should think of Pusher a little bit like a radio where you can tune into different channels. So if, there, if it uh, would make sense, you can use different channels. But for this uh, dashboard, we only have that dashboard channel here going on. Okay, I've already said a lot about this. And before we dive into the JavaScript side of things again, let's prove that this actually works, that I'm not lying here. So, um, I have here that empty packages style. And when I uh, run artisan here, I have a shortcut for that. I have uh, the best shortcut in the world, namely A, and it's alias to PHP artisan, because I do that every day so many times. So if I just run A, then I run artisan. If I run a dashboard, then I get all the dashboard commands. And I want to uh, execute the dashboard fetch totals thing. Now, if the internet gods are happy, then our Laravel project is now busy uh, asking the packages API, hey, give me the, the download numbers. When it is done that, it will uh, send an HTTP request to Pusher. And with any luck, this style will update in a few seconds and Preferably right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it would even be more awesome if we, we'd hit the 10 million download mark right now. We're very close, uh, close to that. Um, so you see that I've not lied. This, this actually worked. I've also here open in my browser the, uh, the pusher site. And this, uh, this is the debug console of pusher. And you can see here, can I make this a little bit bigger, that we just uh, sent um, an event called packages totals fetched. And here you can inspect what was sent. So here you can see that we really uh, yeah, sent those properties to over there. Cool. Let's go to the JavaScript side of things to see how this, uh, how this works. So again, I'm going to jump to assets, JavaScript. Uh, let's go to the packages style here. And again, I have some HTML here, and I have some, uh, some script here, some, some behavior here. And here you can see that we have like variables for uh, daily, monthly, total. This is, again, the state of, uh, of the component. And again, we start with an empty state here. Return daily, monthly, total. It's all zero. Um, and again, if I would update those numbers, the component would re-render itself. Now, uh, a special method that this uh, component has is get event handlers. And this is how it will listen to events coming in. Here you can say, hey, view component, if you see this event coming in, called packages totals fetched, which corresponds to the event class that I just uh, showed you, packages fetch, uh, fetch totals, packages totals fetched, hmm? totals fetch, yeah, OK, that's the same one. Then out of the response that we get, we are going to get the daily, monthly, and total variables. We are going to set that to the initial state. And just by setting those things to the internal state, the component will re-render itself. That's how it works. I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into this. But if you don't understand the next sec section, no problem. It, it'll get easier uh, again. But I think for the, the ones interested in a little bit of cool JavaScript will, uh, will want to see this. This component also has a mix-in. And a mix-in in view is a little bit like a trait in PHP. You put a few functions there that are meant to be reused uh, over a couple of different classes. And here we have an echo mix-in, an echo trait, if you will. It's called Echo because we leverage another of Laravel's um, uh, open source frameworks called Laravel Echo. And Laravel Echo is a JavaScript framework uh, that is specifically meant to handle a request from WebSockets. Let's dive into that mix-in. Uh, here you can see which methods get mixed in our component class. 
we add here an extra created uh, method in it. And the created method is, yeah, like I've said, a little bit like a constructor in PHP. In PHP. So this gets executed whenever um, a component is created. And here we are going to call that get event handlers function that we've set up in our component. We're going to loop through it, and we are going to uh, bind the function that it gives to us to the event name. And we are going to say to Echo, hey, whenever you um, hear this event name, just um, give the response to the, to the handler function here. So to that function, we are going to give that response. That response corresponds to, to this thing here. And that's how the data gets, gets in there. So this is a little bit of advanced JavaScript. If you didn't get it quite now, just um, find me uh, after my talk, and I'll explain it a little bit more in detail to you. OK. So except for that last bit, everybody is still, still with me? OK, cool. Let's do something fun here. So I've said that all data comes in via um, WebSockets, and that the initial state of all these things is basically zero. So if I were to refresh the page, everything would be back to zero, right? OK, let's refresh the page. And the data is still there. How do we do that? Well, we do that with another mix in here called safe state. And this safe state mix in, what will it do? It will listen for changes on the internal state here. And whenever the internal state changes, it will save that internal state to local storage. And when a component is created, it will just read that local storage to just build up that state again. If I were to go into that safe state thing here, I'm just going to skim over this. We create a watcher, so we're going to watch internal state. And whenever um, state is changed, we're going to call function safe state. That's that function here. And here, yeah, we are going to yeah, save the state into the, um, the local storage. We also add a function created, which calls load state. And load state will just get safe state from, uh, the, from the local storage. And that's how we uh, get these numbers here. If I were to inspect this, and if I would go to the application here, let's go a little bit bigger here, then you can see here that we have some local storage and that those numbers are here. So if I were to remove local storage uh, altogether here and close it up, then we're back to zero. So that's how that works. Now that I'm here in the browser, I'm also going to say to you that the dashboard also is entirely responsive. So if you have like an, uh, uh, an irregular sized TV where you want to display it on, it's, it's no problem. It will just adjust itself a bit. OK, so that's how the, the packages uh, tile works. And basically, every package that uses um, server-side data works the same. It will just go to the API, it will uh, fetch that, it will send an event to, to Pusher, and Pusher will send it via WebSockets to, uh, to the client. Cool. Let's uh, go to the last part of the, of the code demo. And that's uh, a little bit of fun with, uh, with the Twitter tile, with this tile here. Now, where do we fetch data from? How do we do that? It's again by a, a command in the console thing. And Twitter, it has a few real streams, uh, real time streaming APIs where you can listen to. Um, and on those streams, they tell you every event that happens on Twitter. And if you listen to the general feed of that, yeah, your process will immediately crash because there's so much data going in. But you can set filters to that. You can say, hey, I only want the events that, are, uh, that have these, these conditions. If I open up Listen for Mentions here, you can see here that we use that Twitter streaming API. We are going to listen to the public stream. So these are 
public events, these are not events uh, from uh, direct messages or something. And whenever we hear yeah, our company in those tweets, we will execute a function here, and that function will just send out an event. And because we send out an event, it, Laravel will send it to Pusher, and it will get picked up by, um, by the view side of things. Now, normally, we listen for Spassy, but I think we can listen here for iMasters for a bit. It's like this, I think. Is that uh, correct, uh, the Twitter handle of the company? I hope so. And let's yeah, open up the floodgates. And this is the, the part of the presentation where you actually may, hand, uh, get, uh, may take your phones and start tweeting, mentioning IM Masters. And every tweet that gets sent, with a little bit of luck, it will be displayed on our, uh, our dashboard. So, unless in Brazil nobody has Twitter, maybe our dashboard is down. Ah, here we are, with a picture and all. So, <laughs> cool. So this is live from the, from the audience uh, now here. You can have your moment of glory now. So, <laughs> so yeah. It works. <laughs> okay, I think I'll have to close down the Twitter feed. <laughs> All right. So you see it, uh, it working uh, pretty well here. And you can see that actually with only a little bit of code, you can accomplish uh, this. So that's, uh, that's how that works. Oh yeah, we have a nice picture here going on. Cool. OK. I'm going to shut down the Twitter feed, guys. Last chance. Three, two, one. And we're closed. Oh, still one more here. Cool. So that's what I want to show you um, through code. Um, yeah, these, these guys here, I've, I've, um, this may be interesting, I've closed down the, the Twitter feed, but they're still coming in. Um, what we do here is we have like a, um, maybe I can show it to you here. We have like a waiting list for tweets because we don't want to have a dashboard to have like tweets going on all of the time, so we put them in a queue. And I can show it to you in, our, in the debug uh, tool for, um, for view components. Uh, and here you can see our waiting line is, is just closed. And here are all the tweets that are, are being displayed here. But now no, no new tweets will come in because the waiting line is, uh, is empty. Cool. Let's head back to, where is it? The presentation. So the internet gods were happy. I'm uh, pretty pleased with, uh, with that. I want to talk to you about yeah, one more thing. And that's how we display this dashboard on a, on a television. And how we do that is with a Raspberry Pi 2 that lives behind our, um, our TV. It's powered by uh, the, the USB port from TV, so it doesn't need external uh, power and it boots up into Chromium. And I have actually here a copy of that, uh, that dashboard here with me. And it gets its internet connection from my laptop. And I'm going to yank this out. Up, and I'm going to put it in the Raspberry Pi. Um, let's see here. I have a few more wires here. I have here the power wire, so I'm going to power it up with the power of my MacBook. And with a little bit of luck, this little thing survived my plane ride. So it's now uh, booting up. And it will soon, yeah. Um, oh, it's the wrong one. Damn. Sorry, this isn't the good one. <laughs> 
I actually have two Raspberry Pis. One for my little kids with RetroPie in it and one the real one. But no problem, guys. I have a backup. I recorded it just for this purpose. So, with any luck, I'm going to uh, put it in here so you can see it. Let's head here. So, yeah. <laughs> if anybody wants to play 16-bit games with me tonight, I'm your man. <laughs> so, now I definitely know that this will work. So, I have no stress now because I know this video will actually show the, the right dashboard. And you can see here that we uh, power up the graphical user interface of the, of the Raspberry Pi. There it goes. And in that terminal command, it will now yeah, uh, start up Chromium, um, which will yeah, uh, open up a browser to the URL where our dashboard is, uh, is running on. And you know, here it comes. Hopefully, I know it will. <laughs> And here it is. That's, yeah, it's an older version of, uh, of our dashboard, but it's the same principle. So, terribly sorry for that. Um, if I ever am here again, I'll bring the right Raspberry Pi with me. <laughs> My kids will not be pleased about this. <laughs> They're like the biggest victims in this case. So, you can try our dashboard uh, out for, uh, for yourself. Uh, I've put the code and this repo on, uh, on GitHub. I've written a big blog post about it where I explain everything during this talk. But I explain a few different uh, components here. I also want to say that I've been babbling the whole time on stage here, and a little bit too long, apparently. But I have not created this dashboard alone. This was teamwork, and I got, uh, got some help by uh, two of my colleagues, Willem and Sebastian. William made uh, the dashboard look pretty, and uh, Seb, uh, they uh, to, uh, yeah, wrote some excellent uh, JavaScript uh, for this project. I have a few uh, packages here that, uh, that this dashboard uses. We have Laravel Echo Server, which if you don't like Pusher, you can swap it out with Laravel Echo Server. It's basically just uh, Pusher on your own server. And that few stay thing, uh, safe state thing that I've mentioned, that's a package of, uh, of its own. So. We're at the end. I've uploaded my slides to Speaker Deck. Please go take a look at our company website to see uh, which open source thingies that we've made. Probably there's something there for your next project. Go check out my blog if you want to read about awesome PHP. And if you want to, uh, go check out my side project, Odir App, to monitor your website. So, thank you.